Is anger good or bad? What are your thoughts on that? Let's explore it. If I had the client asking me that question in our one-to-one -one session, I would then be asking them, what does it take to get you angry? And how angry do you get when you get angry? What do you do when you get angry? Everyone's experience is different. So what I do is work with the individual and what they need in their moments of anger. It could be establishing ways of getting out of that battle zone that could work for them, which would mean they don't do something that they would later regret. And it's an opportunity for them to calm down and balance again. That may sound easy, but as we know, it's not. So the work is not only to establish what's going on for my clients at that particular moment when they're angry, it's about being aware and reflecting and assessing what's going on for them on that specific day, uh, that period in their lives, or as far back as their childhood for them and their awareness to be greater as to what is happening inside them, both mentally and physically, when they're feeling that anger. Some clients come for anger management when they are being pushed to do so by others. And that's often because uh, an event has led it to there. And when they are suffering because of that event, and they often naturally wish they'd sought some support or guidance and help beforehand. And when I mention anger, what is it that you subconsciously go to in your mind? Is it someone screaming, raging, breaking things, fighting? Is it a man that comes to your mind when you think of anger? And what about the person who doesn't express their anger in that explosive way? What about the one that keeps it all in? They may not even look angry, but what about what's going on inside them? How is that anger being processed internally? Often I find on the anger management courses, the women who attend are the imploders, the ones who carry it inside them, who don't let it all out at the time. And whilst it may seem that's a better way of handling the anger, you know, without screaming and shouting, in the long term, it's probably not because your mental and physical health will suffer and it will come out in one way. And even if it's not you shouting or, you know, exploding in that way, physical illness will occur as will mental illness. So neither of these ways being an imploder or exploder have any positives in expressing your anger, short term or long term. There have been many changes over the years in terms of how we live and communicate. Not so long ago, the definition of a man was to go to work, usually using your muscles and come home and bring the paycheck. And that was about it. But now women are doing a lot of the work men would do. The definition of what it is to be a man has changed over the years and that can be unsettling for a man and their place in society and their purpose and what might seem like success. This can cause a lot of dissatisfaction where men's needs are not met, where there's confusion and then these feelings come to the surface of anger and identity where a man maybe doesn't feel worthy in their family or relationship due to this and they can't express what they're actually feeling, what they're feeling deep down rather than just what's there, which could be the anger. Recessions over the years and even COVID and especially COVID really challenged men's mental health. They had to probably re-examine their identity and due to this, their self-confidence and self-esteem drop. 
And it's no coincidence that over this period, the suicide rate for men skyrocketed. A lot of aspects of our culture, if you think about social media, has meant there's a lot more aggression and anger in uh, places of work, relationships, and in general. There are many reasons why there is a lot of anger out there. And I'm not here to say it's good or bad. It's what it is. We are human after all. Anger is natural. It's as natural as feeling sad or happy. Anger serves us well when we're expressing it and communicating it in a healthy way. Um, that's whether we're confident or assertive or using it in sport or the workplace to achieve our goals. You will learn so much about anger on our course and you'll learn about your anger specifically and importantly. And this will change your life. You'll set you on a new journey. So back to the question, is anger good? Is it bad? Well, anger just is. I will leave you with that thought. For now, this is Andreas Patikas, your fellow traveler on life's journey, signing out.